Hello everyone, it's me again, Mrs. TK, with another lesson for you from God's Word, the Bible. And you'll notice that I have one of my puppet friends with me here, Domingo the Donkey. Hola. I don't know why he felt like he had to be with me right here at the beginning, because I kind of wanted to talk about some things. Oh, I had to come because I lost something. You lost something? What did you lose? I could help you look for it. It's a, it's a letter. I got a letter from mi abuela. Did, did anybody see my letter anywhere? Um, Domingo? Hmm? Could that be it right there? Hmm? Oh! <laughs> I was holding it. Oh, I feel so stupid. Well, this is the letter from your grandmother? Si, sí, mi abuela. My favorite abuela. Oh, I love her. I'm so glad. You got a letter, huh? Special delivery. Ooh, what does it say? Oh, my goodness. This says that she's going to be coming for a visit soon. See? Sí. Oh, and I am so excited. Oh, 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 so excited. I love mi abuela for sure. And, and, oh, I want to, I want to welcome her. I want to have something really good and special for her when she arrives. That's a great idea. You should definitely have something special planned for when she gets here. Oh, I was thinking. Oh, I know. I could show her my creepy crawly caterpillar collection. Oh, only a few are smooshed. Um, interesting. Uh, maybe, maybe we could think of something else, some other way to welcome her that's less, um, gross. Yeah, I mean, squished caterpillars? Some are alive! Okay, a tank full of caterpillars, some dead, some alive, is not really what would be the best way to welcome Grandma. Um, we, we can surely think of something else. Oh, I just can't think of any ideas. Well, what about you could practice a song to sing for her? Oh, I'm good at singing. La la la. And, and you could also, you could make her a poster or, ooh, even better, a great big banner that welcomes her to your home. To mi casa, see? Oh, oh, I have an idea. I could even use my finger paints to decorate it. Well, I call them hoof paints. All of that sounds like a really good plan. You know, a long time ago, God had an interesting way of welcoming his son to our earth. Wait, wait, God welcomed his son here? He was expecting, he, I don't understand. You see, God had a plan from long ago to send Jesus to earth. And 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, it happened. And he wanted everybody to be ready. Huh, did he make a banner? No. Actually, God made sure that there was someone in place who could get everything ready and do it just right. Hmm, who, who was that? His name was John the Baptist. He was actually Jesus' cousin. And his job was to get everybody ready for Jesus to come. You know, I think you could understand more about it from this video I have. It has some of his words, and it explains what he was trying to do with some kind of modern video clips. Sounds weird. Well, if you watch it, you might not think so. Check out this video with me, Domingo. Oh, okay. This is the voice of one who calls out. Prepare in the desert the way for the Lord. Make a straight road in the dry lands. Every valley should be raised up, and every mountain and hill should be made flat. The rough ground should be made level, and the rugged ground should be made smooth. Then the glory of the Lord will be shown, and all people together will see it. Building a road takes a lot of preparation and a lot of hard work. The first thing that happens is deciding what kind of road to build and where the road should go. 
Highway engineers work hard to figure out the best place to build a new road. They have to think about buildings that might be in the way. And they have to think about who will travel on the road, where they're going, and how fast they'll want to go. Once the engineers have the project all planned out, the road crew takes over. First of all, the road crew prepares the ground for the road. It's really important that the roadway must be level. The road crew uses heavy equipment to grade the dirt and make the roadway straight and smooth. They do all this work so that the road will be smooth and easy to drive on. Finally, it's time to lay the asphalt, the top layer of the road. Asphalt is gravel mixed with sticky tar. A large machine lays the syrupy asphalt down in long strips along the roadway, and a large heavy roller goes over the asphalt and packs it down and smooths it out. When the asphalt cools, it'll be hard enough to drive on. All that's left is to paint on the stripes so the cars know where to drive. The Bible tells us that John the Baptist had a road to build. Not a real road, but a symbolic road. The Bible says that John the Baptist was to prepare a straight road, a highway, for God. It means that John the Baptist was supposed to help people get ready for Jesus by straightening out their lives. And people need to straighten out their lives in much the same way as a road crew prepares for a new road. They had to smooth out the rough spots caused by sin. They had to level out the mountains caused by pride and fill in the valleys caused by wrong living. John the Baptist asked the people to turn away from their sin, to repent. He told them to purify themselves and start living with love and compassion toward other people. By straightening out their lives, the people were, in a sense, preparing a straight, smooth, level highway for Jesus to use to come into their lives. Wasn't that something? I learned a lot about making roads and a lot about what John the Baptist was here to do, too. Very good, Domingo. That was kind of the goal. You see, John had a very important job to do, to get people's hearts ready for Jesus. We're all getting ready for Jesus too, you know. What? What do you mean? Well, this is the season when we get ready to celebrate Christmas. It's when we think about the time long ago when Jesus came to earth as a tiny baby. Oh, I love to hear about that. Oh, me, maybe I can I can tell my my uh, mi abuela about that story too. Oh, I hope so. And I hope even as you get ready to welcome your abuela, your grandmother, to your home, you're also getting your heart ready to welcome Jesus when we celebrate Christmas. Hmm. I would like to do that. Oh, oh, I know. I could welcome Jesus by showing him my creepy crawly cratter caterpillar collection. With the squished ones. Mm-hmm, and some alive. Well, when you pray tonight, you tell God all about your creepy crawly caterpillar collection. I'm sure he'll be glad to hear about it because God listens to everything we share with him. He wants to be close to us and to know what's in our hearts. Hmm. Well, that would be fun. Hey, wait. Did, did I put the lid back on the tank when I was looking at them this morning? Hmm. The lid might be off the tank. Where is this tank? Oh, I better go. Adios, everybody. Oh. <laughs> All right, Domingo. You go take care of that tank. I hope we don't have caterpillars crawling all over this place. If you see one, let me know. But as I was telling Domingo, right now, Christians all over the world are getting ready for Christmas. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that, right? Like buying stuff and decorating our houses and baking things. But none of that really prepares us for Jesus to enter our hearts. When we think about Jesus coming into our hearts, we think about getting our lives ready for Jesus. It's about trying hard to live the way God wants us to live.
doing things the way Jesus would want us to do them, behaving the way Jesus would have us behave. He wants us to show love and kindness, to share with others, and to be worshiping God. We should tell God we're sorry for all the things we do that are wrong. That's how we clean up our hearts and get our hearts ready for Jesus to enter us and help us really live for God. That's what John the Baptist was talking about to the people over 2,000 years ago. You know, John the Baptist is in a part of the Bible that we haven't been talking about. You see, all these months leading up till now, during the, the past, oh, I don't know, three, four months, we've been doing lessons here from this portion of the Bible over here. This section is called the Old Testament, and it's about things that happened from the beginning of time all the way up until this part, the New Testament. This is when we learn about Jesus coming to earth, God sending his own son. The New Testament is the beginning of what we call the gospel. Wait, that's not spelled right. Oh, I know why. <laughs> it's because the word gospel, that's how you spell it, that's another way to say the message about Jesus in the New Testament of the Bible. It's called the gospel. But the reason this D is here is not just because, you know, it's all about God. It is. Jesus is the Son of God. But because a long time ago, in the days where Old English was spoken, the word Godspell meant good news. This part meant good, and this part meant news. So they would say, a long time ago, in Old English, they would say Godspell when they meant good news. Well, the gospel is how we say it now, but it still means the same thing. It is the good news about God sending his son, God, there he is, sending his son Jesus to save us all from our sins. A long time ago, people were told that a savior was coming. Jesus was the one who was promised and he would save us all from the problem of our sin. When Jesus came to us at Christmas, everything changed. You know, there's an old hymn that goes, Love came down at Christmas. <laughs> That's the title of an old Advent hymn. Advent being this time of year when we get ready to celebrate Christmas. The hymn is called, Love came down at Christmas. And that's a good way to say it, because Jesus is love. And when Jesus came down from heaven to be with us, he brought his love to all of us to teach us how to love others. That is why we say that love came down at Christmas. And that is why Jesus should be at the center of everything we do in this holy season. I hope Jesus will be at the center for you. That's all I have today. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, help us to prepare our hearts to celebrate Christmas. Help us remember that the reason for Christmas is what Jesus did for us. He's the one we have to focus on. Help us make straight our paths, clean up our lives, and start to live the way you want us to live. That's how we make our hearts ready to celebrate Jesus at Christmas. It is in his holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.